So this is the biggest mistake that I personally made when learning to make money online. And that mistake is not treating my online business like a real business. Now, I know I just told you, like you click here to find out what the mistake is, I told you what it is. And so you're probably gonna wanna just like go click some other video now, cause it's like, okay, got it. But let me explain what this really means for you. So just stick around, let me explain what it really means. Um, because when I was new, I wouldn't have understood what this meant. And so here's what happened for me when I first started online business. I didn't have that much money. I, like I didn't have any resources to be able to invest in the business. And, um, and I put myself in this weird situation just to be able to get access to a course. Right. And that weird situation was like, I spent all my money. I didn't have any money. I was working overtime. I didn't have anything saved. Um, and, and, uh, I had multiple coaches tell me, well, just follow the process and you'll make more money. No, no coach told me what would actually really help the most. And what would help the most is like asking, well, why don't you have any money? Like, what are you like? Cause I had a job. So what I really needed was, uh, some financial literacy. I needed to learn to reduce my expenses of my personal life so that more money was coming in from my job than was going out. If, and this is why this is so important, because if you can't do this in your personal life, you won't do it in your business, even if your business is making money. Like let's say you start a business and you're, you're affiliate marketing, so you're not even providing the service, uh, but you sell this product, some money comes in and if you don't have it handled in your personal life so that, hey, money comes in, like every month, more money comes in than what goes out. And what I mean by what goes out, I mean like your Netflix bills, your subscription, your food, your rent, like everything that you spend money on. If, if you spend more than what you make, then you will always be broke. If you are used to spending more than what you make in your personal life, even if you start a business and you start making money with that business, you're going to continue to spend more than what you make, which means you will always be broke. <laughs> I know this sounds really basic, but uh, there's a lot of people that make a ton of money and are still broke because they spend more than what they make. And then they tell themselves things like, well, I'm building my credit and this and that, and it feels really good because I'm doing it, but you're still broke. And, um, it took me years to learn this because even when I started making money, I would look at it like, well, let me just go make some more money. Like no problem. And there's all these people that say, oh, it's good for your mindset. Like you start making money, just go buy, just go splurge on a bunch of stuff because now you've, you know that you can make more and then you just go make more. And it's like, yeah, that sounds great in theory, but what happens when you go try to make more and then it doesn't work? I know this from personal experience. Let me tell you a quick story, like something that I did. Uh, I closed my first $2,000 sale. This was in 2020. Um, closed my first sale for my own coaching product, 2000 bucks revenue. So this is what a lot of people don't, don't go into when they're talking about their numbers either. I made $2,000 in revenue, but it was on a 12 month payment plan. So the person paid me, it was somewhere around like $175 for that month. And then they were going to pay that every month, right? For me to coach them on, on how to get a, how to get sales online. And so in my mind, I thought like, of course they're going to pay the whole 12 months. Everybody always pays all their bills. And so I'm thinking I just made $2,000, even though it wasn't collected. And I went to my job that I had at the time, which was a janitor. I was a janitor at a hospital. And I was doing the math because I was getting paid like less than $20 an hour there. And I was like, man, I work 160 hours a month here at this hospital and I make less than $2,000 for the 160 hours. And I thought, I just, I just had an hour long phone call with somebody before work today and I made $2,000. And the reality is I made 175 that day, but I thought I made 2000. And so I just said, well, why am I spending all this time at work? Like if I, like if I just take this 160 hours and, 
and only do what I did this morning, I'll make way more money. And so I quit my job that day, right? Quit my job. The problem is, it's like, yeah, you do that math in your head and it makes sense. The math makes sense. But it's like, did I really spend that 160 hours only doing that thing that made me money that morning? No, I wasn't, I didn't have 160 uh, sales calls lined up, right? Um, and, and I didn't get any more clients that first month. And the person that paid me on the payment plan ended the payment plan. She only made that one payment. She didn't make, like, I got one payment out of the 12 I was supposed to get. And I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> and so these are, these are the mistakes that I wanna help you avoid. So we have to treat our business like a real business. And here's what I mean by this. If you go to any brick and mortar business, you look outside, you look down the street, you see, I see like a dog grooming truck out there. Like for somebody to buy that dog grooming truck, they had to put in capital. They had to put in money, right? Um, probably like fifty, sixty thousand dollars just in the truck. Then you got the truck registration, insurance, the tools, all the stuff that's in there. And if you're not the person that's doing the dog grooming, you have the hourly rate of the laborer of whoever you hire, right? And on top of that, that's just to like get the job done. Then you still have marketing. You, how do you get new customers? Is it with ads? You got to pay for those. You have your website. You have your domain feeds. You're talking like a hundred grand out the door. Right, just to have this operation where you're not the only one doing everything. And uh, that's just to like start serving customers. This is how a real business works. And so many people, they fall for the flashy numbers and screenshots that people say about how much they make in revenue. They're not talking about their actual income. They're talking about numbers that the business has brought in in that in like future contracts of the business of like you know if everybody pays all their bills that they owe to us like the, and then that's the number and um and then so new people see that and they think i could make this much they don't realize that the business owner is making like 10 percent of whatever that number is usually um and so they see that and they think i don't need to change anything in my life whatsoever i don't need to change my behaviors, I don't need to change anything about um, about my saving and spending habits. I just need to uh, take out a loan so I can pay this person a couple thousand dollars and they'll teach me how to make $10,000. And it's setting people up for failure. That's why I'm talking about this. And so what we really need to do is start treating the business like a real business. And how do we do this step by step? Well, number one, we expect for there to be expenses. Uh, and paying somebody to learn how to do something is well worth it. Uh, it's funny, like Alex Hermosi, right? A lot of people know who Alex Hermosi is in this space. If you don't, you can just type in Alex H in YouTube and he'll pop up. Um, and uh, so, when he started his gym business, back before he was even doing anything online, when he started his brick and mortar gym business, he had $60,000 saved up from um, his like consulting job that he had. So he had $60,000. And the first thing that, I heard him talking about this on a podcast, that's how I know about this. The first thing that he spent, he, he left uh, Maryland, went to California, um, and the first thing that he spent to start his gym business, the first money he spent was 10 grand to somebody else. He paid somebody else $10,000 so he can learn from them how to grow a gym. This is before he even had a gym. He's like, Here, here's this money. I only got 60K to live off of. It's my whole entire life. Here's $10,000 so that you can show me what you're doing. And, um, and uh, I think... He said that he was spending money. He ended up getting a job for the, um, from that guy. So he was working in that guy's gym and learning like the ropes of like how everything operates. And then he finally opened up his own location. And, uh, and by the time he opened up his own location, he had $5,000 left in his bank account. And he wasn't paying rent anywhere. He, he completely uh, deleted all of his personal expenses. When he opened his gym, he was living in his gym. So he didn't have to pay rent somewhere else. 
So, and like, so when people look at his success, like this is what he did. And this is what successful business owners do. It's like you, you have to minimize your own personal expenses. Um, and when you, when you set your business up so that your business doesn't need to pay you, then you could actually make good decisions in your business. When you, when you, when your business needs to make money so that you can pay yourself the money out of the business and get caught up on bills or whatever it is, or try to not get evicted, like go get a sale so I don't get evicted. Like you always end up making bad decisions in the long term. You may end up, end up bringing on clients that you don't want to work with or that you hate working with or that you despise. Maybe your energies just don't match up, but you can get them to give you money. So you do it because you have this fire you have to put out over here. And then you end up spending the next four months, six months hating life and hating the work that you're doing and the people that you're working with. And then you end up like quitting because you're like, oh, business sucks. It's like, no, business doesn't suck. You just made a really bad decision back here and it made all this other stuff suck. And like the best thing to do, if you already have a job, don't think that starting a business is going to immediately get you out of your job. What you do is you keep working the job, have your job fund your personal life, have your job pay for everything and make sure that your personal life, like that you're still making more than what you're spending. So it's like your job, the money comes in and you spend less than that. Just do that, right? And the easiest way to do that is you look at your bank statement and you look at the recurring charges that are coming through every single month and then think about what you, think about what you really just don't need and delete it. And everything that stays on there should be something that's more important to you than, than this business that you wanna start. If Netflix and Hulu and HBO are, are more important to you than this business, then leave them on there. But the more that you can delete out of there, uh, the, the more breathing room you're gonna leave yourself to be able to uh, make good decisions in your business, to be able to invest in mentorship, coaching, software, whatever you may need to invest, depends on whatever business that you're starting. Um, the, the more money is freed up because you're going to have to invest time and money into a business. Um, just because it's online doesn't mean that that's not going to have to happen. So I hope this was helpful. Um, I don't see too many people talking about this, but it's just, it's like the reality of the situation. And I had to go through a lot of, a lot of, um, trying situations that were not comfortable to learn this myself. Uh, all those examples that I gave, I've done all those things of like working with a client that I really didn't want to work with because they were willing to pay me. And then it was like a nightmare. And like, I've done all of these things. And so I'm sharing this with you so that you don't make the same mistakes that I did. Uh, look at your online business, treat it like it's a real business. If you are looking to start one, save up money to start one, right? Actually save up money, um, cut out expenses, start learning to live below your means. What that actually means is that you could live at a higher, like um, you have more purchasing power uh, that you are not using every single month. That means more money is coming in than what is going out. Uh, and you want to, you really want to be able to do this in your personal life because the only way that a business is profitable, if you create a business, the only way that it's profitable is if you have more coming in than what is going out, right? And so in how we do anything is usually how we do everything. So if you can make your personal life profitable, well, it's going to be a lot easier to make your business profitable when you start it and you get money coming in. Hope that helps. We'll see you in the next video.